in the last lecture what we have seen is that um, the function u given as integration minus infinity f of y p t x y d y where p is the heat kernel or in other words it is the probability density function of normal random variable with uh, mean x and variance t. So, this value u t x is the solution of the heat equation del u del t minus half del 2 u del x 2 is equal to 0. This is a result which we have proved in the last lecture. So, this basically says that u as a function on the upper half plane is uh, upper half plane in the sense that okay, if you take your horizontal axis your as your space variable like x which is the full real number and the vertical axis you take as your time then u as a function defined on this upper half plane in the interior there it is c infinity function and it satisfies this heat equation however on the boundary of this upper half plane is basically uh, the initial condition when time is equal to 0 there u also satisfies the initial given condition f but if your data initial data f itself is discontinuous it is not possible to expect that u would be a continuous function on the closure of the domain correct but a natural question is that okay if f is a continuous function can you expect that it would be the solution would be continuous in on the closure that is a very natural question correct so that we have not yet addressed Okay. So, first we are going to answer to this question affirmatively. We are going to see that okay, uh, this uh, is indeed true. We would continue assuming that f has this particular growth property. We have discussed quite a bit about uh, this growth property, the meaningful meaning of this growth property. That this basically says that f is not having growth like exponential kind of thing of, uh, like e to the power of a x square type of things but any polynomial growth is okay so f does not have you no know, growth more than polynomial okay okay so here we have seen that uh, this part also we have seen earlier that uh, u t x when you write on this way and at the time 0 initial 0 if we plug t is equal to 0 there in the formula it becomes trivially f of x. So, the initial condition is trivially satisfied. So, u satisfies that you know u is the solution of the heat equation. But then the question remains that whether it is continuous on the closure. So, this was one example what we have seen in the earlier lecture that um, when initial condition is like 1 minus mod x then the you know, solution is given by this and then at time t is equal to 0 0.5 that means half okay the solution changes and the value of this solution at t is equal to half is smooth you can see the smoothness is as achieved immediately okay immediately after uh, initial point and it is c infinity function so to answer this question first we consider assume that you uh, that f is a bounded continuous function boundedness assumption is too strict because our general theory that u satisfies the heat equation inside the domain there f is allowed to be unbounded and not only that it can have any polynomial growth but here as a first step we just see that okay if f is bounded then this problem can be settled very easily okay and then we would see the general statement and general proof okay that would be a little detailed okay but uh, one should also know that okay uh, if f has uh, boundedness property then one can conclude very easily so as w has continuous path almost surely and f is continuous then f of y plus wt converges to f of x if y converges to x and t converges to 0 why is it so? As t converges to 0, wt converges to you know, 0 because w 0 okay, and uh, that is 0 and y converges to x and f is continuous. So, this thing would go to f of x. So, this is clear 
and the uh, y plus wt appears uh, when we uh, find out the solution the solution this is u of t comma y u of t comma y is exactly this so inside we know that okay the limit i mean of f is f of the limit okay this can we can do but then how can we assure that the limit can go inside the expectation okay that much only you need to assure but that is also trivial because f is uh, bounded and expectation is integration with respect to finite measure probability measure so we can use bounded convergence theorem okay so you know we can write down that okay that we can put the limit inside and we get f of x okay so this is very simple therefore uh, this thing uh, f of x plus wt you know w0 so expectation of this is the continuous solution uh, to the heat equation provided f is bounded continuous now it is possible to drop the boundedness assumption from uh, this argument okay uh, but then argument becomes longer of course it is uh, apparently not clear how can one manage if f is not bounded okay anyway even if f is not bounded but uh, if has a growth property and brownian motion this is for expectation when you find out expectation that means we are going to multiply the pdf and that product the pdf the probability density function and f together uh, they can actually satisfy some bound okay some l1 or so something okay and then one uh, there one can actually manipulate to uh, allow limit to pass inside okay okay so let us see that proof so without loss of generality we assume that f is continuous at a uh, i mean f of x is equal to 0 I mean, we, would, we must assume f is continuous because otherwise uh, there is no hope. There is no hope that u would be continuous on the closure because u agrees to f on the boundary. Okay, if f itself is not continuous, u cannot be continuous. Okay, continuity is of course there, but uh, the value of f of x we assume just zero. Why? Because even if it is not zero, we can just uh, whatever the value is, I call that c. We can subtract u. I see and the new function whatever we are going to get would again solve the heat equation and that would have boundary data at the point x it would have boundary data 0 okay so, so we can always you know reduce this problem to this problem okay so here since f of x is equal to 0 so we and it is continuous at point x okay and then so at this stage we are not even uh, assuming that f is continuous everywhere in the boundary okay so just the information f is continuous at x information can we prove that the solution would also be continuous at x okay so since f is continuous at x and fx is equal to 0 so given epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that mod of f of y is less than or equals to epsilon i mean strictly less than actually epsilon i mean the typo uh, for all mod of y minus x is less than delta so we can do that okay <clears throat> due to the continuity property so now what we do we consider the point z which is in the neighborhood of x but a smaller neighborhood not the delta but delta by 2 neighborhood okay it will be clear that why this delta by 2 is taken what is the importance of that now our goal is to show that okay u of t comma z okay as t and z so t goes to 0 and z goes to x that mod of u to z goes to 0 so that is our goal correct it's to show that that uh, u is co continuous because u of 0 comma x is anyway f of x that is anyway 0 so to show that u is continuous at x our goal is to show that okay if t is very small and z is uh, also converging to x then this whole thing would be very small and would converge to zero okay so that is the thing now we uh, write down mod of u t z so modulus of integration is less than or equals to integration of the modulus so mod modulus have taken inside so it is sum of three different integrals minus infinity to x minus delta x minus delta to x plus delta and x plus delta to infinity integrands are all same 
So, mod of f of y into p of t comma z comma y t y mod of f y p t z y mod of f y p t z y ok. Now, what do we do? We look at uh, each and every term. So, this middle term is the easiest to handle. Why is it so? Because already our assumption is that mod of f y, I mean because given epsilon the delta was chosen such that mod of f y is less than or, or equal to epsilon. So, this part is less than or equal to epsilon, basically this is less than epsilon ok. So, you do not need equal to sign epsilon. And then this uh, epsilon comes out of the integration, then it is integration x minus delta x plus delta of p t z y is this is p probability density function correct. Total integration minus infinity of this is 1 and this is a sub interval of that. So, therefore, um, so the total integration of p t z y d y without this factor would be less than 1 ok. So, we can write down that this is less than or equal to epsilon. Now, we talk about uh, this term, I mean whatever we are, we are going to talk about this term, a similar argument would apply for this term also. Why is it so? It is because that p is a symmetric function, but not symmetric around x, but symmetry around y here, uh, I mean symmetry around z here, ok. However, z is very close to x, ok. So, you would be able to manage that, ok. I mean, Basically, since z is not equal to x, that's why you know it shifts. So we do not allow z to be a little, I mean, more f uh, far from x. That's why we have taken z in, I mean, in the interval x minus delta by two to x minus delta by two, so that we can uh, manage the small the change there. Okay. Now here, this third integration we are talking about here. So here we. I mean p of t z y, we are writing down the full formula of p of t z y that is 1 over square root 2 pi t into e to the power of minus z minus y whole square by 2 t ok. So, th this term would appear. However, we can actually write down an upper bound uh, of the e to the power term. How are we going to uh, take the upper bound? So, let us see here. So, this is the line drawing that uh, you can see this is the real line and x is here x plus delta by 2 x minus delta by 2 x minus delta and x plus delta is here. So, z is inside the sub interval x minus delta by 2 to x plus delta by 2 whereas y is here or here correct. So, when we are talking about third integral then y is here and z is somewhere here. So, z minus y, so this difference is greater than y minus x plus delta by 2, because this is closer, ok. So, y minus x plus delta by 2 is smaller than y minus z. Now, y minus z whole square, ok, that would be greater or equals to y minus this thing whole square, ok. And the negative sign there we are going to get the opposite sign. So, e to the power of minus of y minus z square is less than or equals to e to the power of minus y minus of this term whole square ok. So, that is the thing we are considering here now that for after I mean writing down the full form of p where we got this coefficient and the e to the power of uh, this thing and then here we have multiplied and divided by e to the power a y square. So, here we have e to the a y square, here we have e to the minus a y square, it is just multiplied and divided. But this is the term which uh, we have, this is the upper bound of the term of p t 0 ok. And uh, now, I mean you can have um, intuition why are we doing this multiplication division because this is the term which actually appeared in the assumption of the growth property of f and we are going to use that correct. Right? So, for that reason ok. So, now we need to control this because this part we can manage ok because we already have some assumption on this the integration of, of over this is finite only thing is that this part we need to manage that it should go to 0 or something ok right? it should be small. Now, here for sufficiently small t e to the power of a y square minus y minus x plus delta by 2 whole square by 2 t 
okay this whole thing decreases as y increases on x plus delta to infinity okay so uh, it can be shown in many ways like you know just by analytically uh, you can take uh, a derivative uh, with respect to y and check the derivative is becoming negative for y large so that is going to give you that it is decreasing and you can take limit and show that okay so if t is small enough so that means 1 over 2 t is large and then therefore this term would start dominating over this if 1 over 2 t is much larger than a then it will start dominating and then if y tends to infinity so it will be minus infinity right to the you go to the numerator will go become larger and since this would dominate over this so it would be it to be minus infinity so it will go to 0 so that is one way of looking at it otherwise you know one can <coughs> also view it uh, geometrically like this is uh, like a parabola upward and this is minus of the square is a parabola downward this has vertex origin but this has vertex different x plus delta by 2 which is uh, away but uh, thing is that uh, when we are talking about y on the other side right hand side there this is monotonically increasing and this would also be monotonically decreasing okay so on that side on the right hand side where y is more than x plus delta and then it is just that uh, you, one needs to find out appropriate choice of uh, t such that uh, this has higher eccentricity and then uh, it uh, dominates okay so i have uh, described uh, two different way to view this now uh, this thing would uh, i mean does not monotonically i mean although i have written that this goes to zero that does not mean that i am saying that it is monotonic that uh, this would if you take uh, derivative of this with respect to y you would not get say negative for every all y but for large y you are going to be negative okay so i mean i think if i draw some picture it would be better okay so here and imagine that so this is uh, ay square and this is x plus delta by 2 vertex and this is that uh, other side of the parabola now if you add these two i drawn outside because uh, i mean below downward so because it is negative right negative sign is there and then at this point see this is increasing but this is not increasing correct it is like steady and then it decreases very fast so if you add so then addition would actually have some increment to in the beginning here okay so here x plus delta is there but i cannot assure that whether here onward it would decrease but uh, it would just have some you know it would increase uh, for some time and then of course this would dominate and then it would start decreasing okay so we can actually look at the maximum point here okay so maximum point here so that is the thing which which we are going to do now so with the maximum at y is equal to y naught so here so if you add these two things say uh, here this is y naught okay this is my y naught so now we take the derivative of this i mean how to find out the formula of y naught why not would be obtained if I take derivative of um, uh, this because I do not need to look at exponential thing because it is a monotonic function. If I can find out the maximum of this, I would be done. So for finding maximum of this, I would take partial derivative of this function with respect to y and evaluate y is equal to y not. So this is a type of I should write y not here, y zero here. So there is two a y not minus y not so here 2 is there square is there so 2 but here this 2 and that 2 what would appear would cancel each other so y not minus x plus delta by 2 by t with this switch to 0 and then you simplify okay there is a typo it should be 1 here so to then 2 a t into y not minus y not then you take y not common 2 a t minus 1 times y not 
is equal to the minus minus plus sign, but this goes on the other side of the equality. So, you get minus x plus delta by 2 and then you divide everything by 280 minus 1. So, y naught is equal to x plus delta by 2 divided by 1 minus 280, assuming that okay, this is non zero. Okay. So, here for our case, uh, since we are going to look at for sufficiently small t and is fixed, so of course, in a neighborhood of zero, uh, I would uh, be able to assure that this would be non zero there. Okay. So, that is sufficient for us. So, this is the point y naught where we have that this, you know, this difference is maximum. Okay. Now, we observe that uh, e to the power of this thing a y square minus y minus a x plus delta by 2 whole square divided by 2 t. Okay. This expression. So, we find an upper bound uh, that is uh, we write down its value at y naught because we know that uh, I mean this thing is bounded above by this function at y naught because y naught is the maximum point. So, we evaluate this function at value y naught. So, that would be an upper bound of this expression. And that was our goal. Our goal was to manage this term, okay, actually to show that this actually goes to 0. To show that actually we have first figured out what is the maximum of this function, okay. So, here a times, now y naught is like this, okay, x plus delta by 2 whole square and 1 minus 280 whole square yes this is one okay? so it is corrected here but there is a typo here 1 minus 280 whole square minus so this y also we write down here and this y also has x plus delta by 2 here also we have x plus delta by 2 we can take common x plus delta by 2 so x plus delta by 2 whole square is taken out of this in, uh, square and then I mean, we would have 1 over 1 minus 280 there so 1 over 1 minus 280 minus 1 so, that is 1 minus minus 1 plus 280. So, this whole square would re remain and then 2 by 2t was there and we keep it here. So, this numerator we are writing this way. Okay, 1 minus 1 you know, cancels and 280 and 2t. Uh, so, 280 whole square. So, I would get 2a square t. Yes, I would get 2a square t minus 2a square t here and 1 minus 280 whole square yes my 1 minus 280 whole square and x plus delta by 2 whole square is remaining here and this thing is also remaining so i have 1 minus 280 whole square and this things okay so this is the expression it can all further be simplified because here x plus delta by 2 whole square is common so then a can also be taken common. So, 1 minus 280 again. So, that would cancel with this square term. So, I would get a times x plus delta by 2 whole square divided by 1 minus 280. Okay. So, this is just you know manipulation, algebraic manipulations, but these are very important because otherwise one does not get that uh, particular um, estimate. Okay. Now, we look at uh, this expression x plus delta by 2 1 minus 280 as t is small okay t tends to a 0 so here let us see what does it do uh, it is a little smaller than 1 correct so because if t is small then 1 minus 2 it is still positive okay so but this is little less than 1 so little less than 1 is in the denominator so this whole thing is little more than x plus delta by 2 but as t tends to 0 this would converge to x plus delta by 2 so it would converge from the up Okay, so it is converging from upward. So it is decreasing to x plus delta by two. So if it decreases x plus delta by two, so and where, where x plus delta by two is itself less than x plus delta, so that means after certain t small sufficiently small, this quantity would be inside within x plus delta. Okay, so now on x plus delta to infinity, that uh, positive line, the maximum is e to the power of so, I am writing from here. So, here e to the power of a times x plus delta by 2 whole square into uh, divided by 1 minus 280, correct? This was the maximum. It was maximum on this whole x plus delta 2, the delta by 2 to infinity, okay? However, if that maximum below x, x plus delta, so that maximum which was achieved, which is below this, so that means here it would strictly decrease. So, for x plus delta by 2 to infinity I have the upper bound 
but that upper bound is here, then the function would decay. So that means at the point x plus delta, it would be a little lesser possibly, whatever the value is. And then that should become the new upper bound for the function over this interval. So if I look only the subset x plus delta by uh, x plus delta to infinity instead of x plus delta by 2 to infinity, so then there the upper bound is actually uh, the value of the function at x plus delta. Why? Because the value of the, 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 the function's maximum achieved at some point which is below x plus delta and the function is decreases hence onward. So the function's maximum value from this point to infinity should be on the boundary. So here, when we consider instead of delta by 2, we consider x plus delta to infinity, then the maximum for finding a maximum, we can now safely evaluate the function at the point x plus delta itself. So all these analysis actually earlier helped me to do this confidently, but this we cannot do for any arbitrary t, for sufficiently small t, okay. For sufficiently small t when this is below x plus delta, okay. So then only for sufficiently small t we can, sufficiently small t onward, okay, all the time. So this would be the function of t. So what is the benefit here? See earlier that upper bound had was quite complicated, okay. So like here many t is okay. So a plus a into x plus delta by 2 whole square divided 1 minus 2 a t this way. So here it does not have the expression of the kernel, heat kernel, okay, because 1 minus 2 a t is there. But here it appears a times x plus because uh, my function is actually a y square minus y minus this whole square by 2 t. So y is replaced by x plus delta a x plus delta whole square minus so y I'm writing x plus delta minus x plus delta by 2 whole square by 2t. Now here x, x cancels so we get delta minus delta by 2 that is delta by 2 whole square. So delta by 2 whole square divided by 2t and here I have as it is e to the power of a times a x plus delta whole square okay into e to the minus delta square by 2 by 2t. Now this quantity looks like you know the heat kernel, the probability density function for normal. Only that you, we do not have appropriate coefficient multiplier. So we uh, multiply and divide it by this square root of 2 by t and then divide on square, square root of 2 by t. Then this looks like you know that with mean 0 and variance t and evaluated at the point of delta by 2. So p of t comma 0 uh, delta by 2. Okay. So this term is equal to square root 2 pi t times p of t comma 0 comma delta by 2. I mean this is kept as it is. Okay. So this is the new upper bound for that function on x plus delta to infinity and that is the thing what is of our inter interest because we would like to upper bound of the integ third integration where the domain of y is x plus delta to infinity. Okay. So x plus delta uh, to infinity mod of f of y p of t comma 0 by dy. So here we uh, have written that this is less than or equal to x plus delta to infinity uh, e to the power minus a y square mod of f y dy into this e to the power a x plus delta whole square and then this thing, correct? This square 2 pi t we do not need anymore because uh, that got cancelled from the earlier expression, correct? So here we had already 1 over square 2 pi t. We had this term and this term. So this term we have, uh, you know, estimated upper bounded and this term was there. So we got this term. So we don't need to worry about this term, okay? See, I mean, how important was this analysis because we were anyway going to take t tends to 0 and then this uh, explores, correct? So this whole thing, I mean, this manages, correct? So this things manages, okay? This balances. So that balancing is now appropriately illustrated and captured here. So now there is no uh, t term, everything is here. Now here in this, as t tends to 0, what are we going to see? 
okay. So, we know that uh, as t tends to 0, this is the probability density for normal random variable with mean 0 and uh, variance t at value t delta by 2 and this does not depend on t. If variance decreases, okay, then the probability decreases, okay, and then this uh, kernel goes to 0. You can also see analytically in, instead of this probabilistic justification, uh, I mean explanation. Okay, this goes to 0 as, as t tends to infinity, okay. And now this term is finite, okay, and I have this and this goes to 0. So, we can actually have sufficiently small t cell equal delta prime, below that this whole thing would be uh, bounded by say epsilon. So, therefore, there is a delta prime positive such that third integral is less than epsilon for all t less than delta prime. Because here this whole thing does not depend on t anything, okay, this is a fixed number and this number is only decreasing as uh, we are decreasing t. So, we can make this. Therefore, there is a delta prime positive such that the third integral is less than epsilon for all t less than delta prime. Similarly, the first integral is also less than epsilon as t is less than some, I mean I have written the same delta prime, one can take some other delta prime also because due to the same argument, okay, because there also one would have exactly the uh, same way of arguing. So, hence, from these three terms, we are going to get three epsilons. Mod of u of t comma z is less than or equal to three times epsilon. So this is true. No matter what uh, z is, z is between uh, for any z between x minus delta by two to x plus delta by two, and for any t less than delta prime. So even if it is difference of delta double prime, you take a minimum between this, and then you have, you can use that here. So, that is basically saying that this is a double limit, correct? Because given epsilon, you got up above, I mean, the, the, the neighborhood for t and z both, okay? So, z limit z tends to x and t tends to 0, uh, then mod, modulus of u of t comma z is equal to 0, okay? So, this proves that the solution of the heat equation, okay? which is written as conditional expectation, okay, that is continuous at the initial point, okay, that is boundary of the domain now because domain is z, t and z, correct, two different uh, variables. So, it is continuous at that initial point data if uh, the data is continuous there. So, or in other words, if your initial data is continuous function on the whole domain, then the solution of the heat equation would also be continuous on the whole domain and I mean interior and the closer also is conscious of the closer also. So that completes the proof of this theorem. Okay, thank you.